very susceptible to uh, getting a cold or any other kind of virus. Um, the elderly, elderly aren't so much that they catch it easier. It's harder for them to get rid of a cold. Um, their immune system isn't always as fast to respond. And when it does, it normally will respond at kind of a weaker rate. And so it just kind of takes longer for them to get rid of things and it might hit them harder. And that's, it's a great point, right? Because you think about elderly members of our population, they're more isolated, right? It's kind of crazy to think about it this way, but it's absolutely true. They're more isolated, and as a result of being isolated, they're not getting these infections. And I love your graph. I mean, that's great. You know, you can see that just goes down as you get older and older. But I'm so glad you brought up this point. The, the tragedy is that, well, it's not a tragedy, but the hardship is that when they do get these things, it's it's tough on them. Yeah. Um, and because, like, you know, you go to elderly homes or around a lot of other people like that. Um, and then the last part is uh, like diet, diet and smoking. Um, eating a healthy diet helps keep your body in like, <coughs> top shape, and you know you'll be healthy and your immune system will be at the top of its game. So eating a healthy diet helps prevent colds. But if you eat a lot of junk food, <coughs> then obviously your body's not going to be you know performing at its top. So it'll be a lot easier for you to catch a cold and uh, have a weaker immune system response. And then smoking, uh, it uh, restricts an airway function, which uh, if the airway function helps uh, kind of prevent and like, I guess, in a sense, uh, prevents the cold, I guess, from like getting anywhere into your chest because that's uh, with smoking, the most common cold you can get is a chest cold. So I guess it'll prevent uh, viruses and everything from getting down to a deeper part of your chest. And, uh, uh, for mortality, I'm sure you all know that the cold is very bothersome, but it is not deadly, thankfully. Uh, some have to be cautious when they do get it, though, such as individuals with asthma and psychosis <coughs> because of the um, coughing, which can lead to breathing problems, and then complications, and then hospitalization. Uh, even furthermore, it can become serious for even healthy individuals because it can lead to ear infections, strep throat, pneumonia, and bronchitis. So even uh, everyone should be somewhat cautious whenever they get cold and uh, just monitor it. Okay, so first off, I want to apologize. I'm pretty susceptible to migraines and the medication I take kind of knocks me out. But anyway, Chad, I might Amanda, want to see I've been knocked out by a lot less. <laughs> 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 if I would have passed out, it, made, it would have made the video much more interesting. But anyway, um, the role of humans, the transmission of it is mainly based by improper education. Um, people don't necessarily understand exactly how the virus is spread. And if you have any more questions about that study, I can probably tell you later. Um, and personal hygiene is a big factor, like washing your hands on a daily basis and knowing when to cover your cough and stuff like that. Like we'll talk a little bit later with the um, prevention of catching the virus. And one thing, one important note that we do want to mention is how this contributes to other disorders, which a big thing from doctors prescribing antibiotics for upper respiratory disorders, which are not needed. This just, um, has kind of emerged the fact of drug resistant pathogens. And it's not the only cause by no means. We've learned about that there's a lot of different other causes, but just the main occurrence of physicians prescribing antibiotics when they're not <coughs> needed and patients expecting antibiotics or just com like complete laziness in a way of taking them has contributed to much worse um, disorders like multi-drug resistant TB and such things. So prevention, as I meant alluded to earlier, it's pretty much said on the slide. So anyway, wash your hands, cover your mouth when you sneeze, cover your, cover your mouth with your shoulder instead of your hand because obviously it's a contract the disease everywhere and and then some some like misconceptions about the is like the in the virus. Disinfectants will not work at all because it doesn't kill them because 
and antibiotics, as she alluded to earlier, kind of make antibiotic resistant viral inflammation and, and then over the counter medications like cold remedies, they get over prescribed and by doctors and so they get viruses get resistance to that. And I I missed a point. The only study that proved to eliminate the re renal virus was the iodine. But because iodine is not something you want to put in your hands every day or ever because it just colors and dries the skin. And the next slide. And so, okay, so treatment. So, as we alluded to earlier, there's no treatment because there's no vaccine for the, for the virus. So, but the two common goals are to make the person feel better and to help, to help fight off the virus. Like, help fight off it with much sleep, 12 hours. So, whenever you get late for class, just tell your professor that you were late because you were sleeping trying to fight the renal virus. <laughs> I think that would only work for me. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'd be down with that. That's a that's okay. a great that's a fine excuse. Okay, good job. Okay, thank you. And of course, you want to drink lots of water and for your mucus to be moved more freely, so you don't so you can run your noses and that stuff. And then some decongestion, so like Vicks vapor rub and some other stuff that are decongestants wise that your physicians recommend it would be a suitable treatment for the renal virus. All right, when I looked these up, I figured we'd get some crazy things, but uh, these aren't. So the onion broth was done by the Romans. I don't know if they just tossed some onions in a pan and then added water. When I yep. see when I see that though, I, I'm thinking mojitos. <laughs> I don't see the ice though. So. Oh, cool. Well, I figured that could be a purple So then, um, the Colonial Americans tea it still fixes everything, along with the herbal mixtures, such as sage. Golden seal, blood root, and buckthorn. There's other ones too, but I couldn't pronounce them, so I just forgot about them. So then, <laughs> honey and lemon.